Mm. Hey campers, Georgia, back in the man cave. Woo! It's chilly out there. It's down to 28 today and it's getting even lower next week. We're already starting to see a little bit of snow. The main reason I'm in the cave today, besides keeping warm, is I got me a goodie. This guy from Hut Salts, I think that's how you say it. And what it is, a woodling kit. It's a, a really a beginner's kit. I just wanted to have a look at it, see what knives they have and what's available. And then maybe as I get better at whittling and get more into it, I'll get better ones. Who knows? But if these work, they work. Let's check them out. And it's a nice little kit. I found it on Amazon. And it's basically a starter kit. And uh, opening it up here, yeah, it's a nice box actually. It tells you what's in there. They are, I do know, they are located in the United States. I know that the products are made in China. And, you know, I try to look them up and, and find out a little bit more about them. But not a lot. They're in Connecticut. So uh, they are a U.S. company, which is, I suppose, a good thing. To be competitive, you got to go to China. So in the box, you can see uh, it has a little roll here. In the box is this roll, and it has a rubberized strap on it, and the roll folds out. Let's coffee, it's cold. Ugh. So, in the roll, you can see it here, uh, is the first thing I noticed was they give you gloves. These are cut-resistant gloves, um, and this says high-performance Cut level five. Not sure what that means, but I'm pretty sure it's a good thing to have. Safety first, I suppose. And seeing as it is a beginner's kit, they want to make sure people are safe. So there's something positive out of this. Will it fit my grubbies? Probably not. Looking at it, mm, but we'll give it a try. And inside the kit, you can see right here is three knives and they give you a leather strop just plain leather stropping compound so that's nice and then of course the three knives now if you're wondering why i bought this i've always whittled with my say hi to mary <laughs> has to make her appearance she wants to know what's new in town i've always whittled um with a particular knife now sometimes I'll be walking around and find a piece of wood and I'll sit down and start whittling with whatever knife I have in my pocket or on my belt but if I feel like I need to go outside and whittle typically what I do is I grab my mora and it's not really a whittling knife it's more of a carving knife a wood carving knife so it has a long blade, it's extremely sharp, pointy and everything like that, which is great. And it does a great job. The problem is, is trying to do the fine stuff, it's just too long and too far away from the wood. I don't have the control I want on the fine woodling. So the knives in this one, although I do have a spoon knife, also from Mora, um, and these guys have this one here. You can see it there, it's spoon knife. And this diameter here is a little bit smaller than the one that I have. And, you know, I've noticed that when I'm whittling, I'm whittling smaller things, like my cutlery set I'm putting together. Let me grab that for you. You remember these guys. Well, these are pretty small, and I, I really struggled to get in there and make a small uh, spoon. Um, I had to literally use just the tip of the other one. So this is small and I'm hoping that's going to help. The, the nice thing they do is they provide you with a little safety here because these are sharp. You got your spoon knife, uh, also referred to as a, a hook knife. I call it a spoon knife because uh, you're spooning out, if you know what I mean. And then the other one they give you 
well they actually give you two more and here they are here and you can see they come with protection the difference in the blades here and obviously these are two different types of blades you use in whittling you can see how thin and sharp this one is and this one has a broader blade um, a nice sharp point to it but it's a little bigger the other thing i noticed is that the handles are different so it must have something to do with what these particular knives are used for what they are i'm not sure but i'm gonna learn um, because i i really enjoy whittling for me it's one of it's like fly fishing for me without the water when i fly fish i think of nothing else i'm i'm at peace when i fly fish but it helps me relax if i'm stressed or anything like that i go fly fish i come back i'm a new man same with whittling just sitting there your mind is is clear you're just working away at what you're doing it really clears your mind i want to learn more about it because i think i'm going to whittle more mary's all over these so i'm putting the covers back on she might just stand on them and now that i have her distracted with something i can get on with the video so like i said it has the three knives and if you look these two handles are, are pretty uh, similar if you look at them this one is different these two knives here i was trying to figure out what they for why are they so different from what i understand this is considered the one with the long the long blade the bigger blade on it as a whittling knife so this will do the when you whittle the heavier stuff this is the detail knife when you're really getting to some fine detail and cleaning up i assume so i'm pretty sure i'm going to put these to the test along with the spoon knife nice little set and of course it comes with your roll side here and you've got your you know like i said a strop and compound whatever you want to call it and then of course your glove so let's see if the glove fits me if not well maybe i'll find somebody who they will fit but they uh, the fingers look a little stubby oh they're easy to they're not really tight which nice oh huh look at that I wonder how they even feel warm. Ooh, I'll be able to go to the shed and my hands won't freeze. Winter's here. Wow. I mean, you look at it, it doesn't look like it's going to fit anything. But then you put them on. And they protect you from Mary. <laughs> this video is going to take a while. Now that I've got Mary settled down and doing something else... It's like having a four-year-old kid in the house. What I'm going to go through quickly is I'll just go through each knife with you, give you the dimensions, and let's have a look at them. The hook knife, or what I call the spoon knife, and you can see it comes to a nice uh, point there. And uh, looking at the blade here, it feels sharp. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it is. We'll give it a try myself. And the handle is that just that regular shaped handle. The handles are made of ash wood and they say they've been ergonomically designed for the task. One thing I do notice, it's slippery. Um, I don't know if they put, it doesn't look like they've put anything on there, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, put some linseed oil on and soak them in that. I find that when I do that, the grip of the wood is a lot better. This uh, feels a little slippery for me. So ashwood, straight grain on them. Uh, nice handles. Can't complain about that. The dimensions. This is a one inch diameter on the uh, the spoon, on the blade. Um, it, is st it is carbon steel. They do say it is carbon steel. They don't say what kind. Unfortunately, I tried to look that up. I couldn't find it. The blade length, two and a quarter inches. And the overall length is four and one eighth of an inch. So not bad. It fits my hand. Okay. I don't see a problem there. The thickness of the blade uh, is one sixteenth on all of them, the thickness. So uh, not, not too bad. So that's the uh, spoon knife. Now we have this guy, 
which I believe is what they refer to as the whittling knife. And you can see the handle is the same as the spoon knife, which means, uh, you know, it's more heavy whittling that you're going to be doing. It's not going to be used for delicate stuff. And you can see the blade there and the, the name on, on all of them. One sixteenth, um, nice sharp, very tight point on it. Can't complain about that. I'm hoping you can see this. For some reason, it just seems dark in here today. Back to the handle, Ashwood, same thing. Feels the same as well. Overall length, four, four and a sixteenth. The blade length, two and three eighths. Uh, carbon steel, but very nice. I like that. That would be a good whittler. This is the one that I was really interested in, which they refer to as the detail knife. Now, it's pretty obvious when you look at the blade, how small and delicate, well, I want to say delicate, how small and thin that blade is. That's going to allow you to get in really fine. One thing I think, the shape of the handle, you see it there right away. Um, it has that, it's not that regular, just flat handle. It has this dip in it. And I'm wondering, is it because of that? Because that is the way I would use this. Because I want to use it to make the pa oh she's back to do the patterns on on whatever I'm whittling because I want to pattern things I want to make them look a little bit fancier than just a plain wooden spoon knife fork whatever you're making this one I think is going to help me a lot because I really struggled trying to make the patterns in the spoons on this one for example you can see there. Um, I really struggled because the blade was so long. I was so far away. I couldn't. I couldn't really uh, steady myself and be as delicate as I wanted to. This, the shape of that that blade. You see how it comes down like that. That really gives you, I think, a lot more control on the more delicate stuff you're going to be doing. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> we'll find out. Linseed oil, of course, on the blade on the handles. That'll take care of it. The length, the length on the blade uh, is one and a quarter inches. I'm pretty excited about this. In fact, I want to go and give them a test. You want to come with? We're going to go down to the man cave in the South 40, you know, the refrigerator, <laughs> and uh, give it a try there. I'll try and get through it without freezing to death. We'll, we'll give it a try. I know, maybe make something quickly. Got some torch to do there first, so got to clean that place up. I uh, started doing some stuff there that I, I need to take care of before we get there. I don't like working in an untidy area. <laughs> Let's go play. It's a mess. Gonna have to tidy this all up and then we'll get on with it. Got it all cleaned up and put away. I had, I was sorting out my nuts, bolts and screws. Disconnecting the battery on the lawn racer. That's got to go in the house now. Winter is here. Got to keep it on a trickle charge or else it'll die. Let's see what we can do with this guy. Pretty excited about this. Hopefully this is going to work. I'm not sure what I want to do. So I keep a notebook on ideas. I carry it around with me if I'm walking around, that sort of thing. And I make notes on stuff I can do. Maybe make a video of it and show it to you guys. So let's see what, oh, I know what I want to do. I just saw a pot lid lifter. You know when you're cooking? on the fire, you're boiling water or whatever you're doing and the lid's on there and you want to look inside. Well, it's hot. Well, normally I just grab a stick and it's kind of hit and miss when I lift it up. So I think I'm going to make me one, fancy one that'll uh, go with my uh, 
whittling utensil outfit I'm making for my fooding when I'm out trudging. Winter's here, so when I go trudge, I'm going to you know, be making a meal or at least a hot cup of coffee for myself. And when the water's boiling, I want to put the lid on because it helps it boil, especially when it's getting down in the low tens. So uh, well, one of those things, lift it up so I don't burn my little stubby grubbies. Let me go find a stick. Okay. Found me a stick out back there by the fireplace. Here's the plan. This will be the handle. And then this little piece here, if I cut that off and I can shape this all, and I can just hook it in and lift the lid up. So what I'm going to do is I'll get all the, the bark and everything off. Uh, round this the way I want it. This is going to have to come into some sort of reasonably sharp point so that you can get it into the handle and lift it up. I want the handle to be big enough that I can make some sort of patterns or something on it. So let's do that. So here we have it here. I've taken, you could, I did all the rough stuff and I did use my Mora to get most of the heavy stuff off because I think, although this is a meant to be a, a carver, a, a whittler, um, this wood, it's not basswood, that's for sure. It's way harder than basswood. But this handled it. I mean, I, I did some of the heavy stuff with this, although now I'm going to use it more. Um, I used the Mora to do most of the dirty stuff. Now, one thing I did notice, I was right. This is really slippery, this handle. And especially with the gloves being added to it, the gloves are very slippery, but they keep my hands reasonably warm. <laughs> it's really cold right now. Um, you can see my hands are getting red from uh, getting so cold. It cuts it. Like I said, this wood is pretty hard and it, it cuts right into it. Now, what I want to do now is decide how, where I go from here. Let me uh, work on it a little bit more um, with this guy and uh, get it down and a little bit more shaped the way I want it to, the flat edges, that sort of thing, and then we'll go from there. So what I thought was going to happen, happened. It is so cold in here that my batteries are dying on everything. Obviously, my solar isn't getting enough because we're all overcast. I thought that might happen. And I have a backup uh, light LED set up here that's really bright. But what I'm going to do is now that I've got most of the heavy stuff taken care of, I'm going back into the man cave in the cottage. It's warmer there and my hands are killing me. But I'll set myself up so I don't make a total mess and we can finish the project. <laughs>
be patient. We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> Made it back to the man cave in the cottage. Warming my hands up here. So I've set myself up here so I can work here. We here right now. I made some marks. Um, one there. Just a ring. It's a, a stop cut. And this is where the flat is going to be. Here you can see how I've started to shape uh, the hook. And it'll be a little bit rounded here. And smoothed out a little bit more. Obviously you see I trimmed all this off. The reason I chose this stick was because it had that branch out. I wasn't sure I could just get a flat piece of wood and shape it out and cut it that way because of the grain. And I thought doing that would really weaken this because the grain runs that way. So now I'm going to get my whittler and I'm going to get this down flat. Uh, cleaning it up and, and doing some fancy stuff to it. Okay, here you can see I've got the shape that I want. And now I'm going to clean it up some more, the detailer, to start cleaning it up and making it a little bit smoother and then maybe some sandpaper and get it nice and smooth and then put some patterns on using the detailer. These are, are not really designed for a hardwood. Most whittling is done on a, a fairly soft wood basswood being the most common. I'm not sure what this wood is. It's from the backyard, it's from one of the trees, and uh, it's a lot harder than basswood. Uh, the only issues I'm having, I think, are mine. Uh, this tends to catch on any sharp little pieces sticking out. and They're slippery, but I think, you know, there's no way around that. All these things are considered a starter kit. You know, they're better than what I've been using. You know, I've been using just my, my everyday carries, um, which are not really designed for whittling. I think these I'll do a lot better. It's, it's, they're obviously made for the job and they, they do it well. Let's get on with it. So here you can see I've just added, you know, I rounded off the, the handle, added a little bauble here, cleaned up this sharp edge here, and then cleaned up the inside here. And that really surprised me how well that uh, whittler, I mean, that detail does. And I think it's because of the, the blade is so thin that you can get in there and really clean up well. I'm having fun with this. I like these. I'm impressed.
just so that you know, Whitler's gold. <laughs> I like to keep sawdust like that. You can use it to fill mistakes. I've done as much cleaning as I want to do. That's about as smooth as I want to get it. I really wanted this area smooth so nothing catches when it gets onto the lid. I've got to draw some patterns on here, decide what I want to do with that. We'll see how it turns out. Don't know if you can see that, but some very basic patterns. See how well I do. Might be out of my league here. Now I've got to get it with that knife. I've now gone through and traced everything with the knife. It is a lot easier to do. I just got to get better control. Every now and again, it got away from me. But I think with practice, yeah, maybe it'll work. I really like those knives. They, they work great. I can't, I can't complain. So here you have them. In their little bag. With everything it comes with. These guys works for me. Got everything you need, and is even room for the gloves and everything. See that hut soles? So I'm gonna fill those little cuts in on here with some pencil dust and put some linseed oil on, and let's see how we do with that. There it is, my hot lid lifter. Fun project. I really have to work on my uh, pattern skills. I think it's just going to take practice. But you know what? I'm not going to burn my fingers anymore. Just saying. <laughs> Don't forget now. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back again. This Hutzel's wood whittling kit for beginners, it's pretty good. And for 25 bucks, you can't beat that. With the cut proof gloves, three knives, a strop, you can't go wrong. Might want to try it. It's very relaxing. Pretty sure I'll be back with something else. Cold in the shed. Ha, huh, we're going to have to figure that out. Probably going to have to pull out my ice fishing heater <laughs> a little before time. But if it's going to keep me a little bit warmer in there, I can get things done. I've got a lot of projects going on. Just saying. You all be safe out there, especially with them sharp and shinies. And these guys are sharp. Thanks for watching. Take care now. See you again soon. Bye.